what's up guys Zuri here here for our very late month end of month tier list you can see i have twitch chat with me here this is only because the game went on fucking maintenance in the middle of my polls so uh fuck me i guess so i guess we're doing two lists now because i happen to forget about it so uh let's get on with it the s tier good decks a tier is okay decks b tier is playable decks i'm just gonna fill out the b tier first uh garbage garbage uh garbage garbage uh, i think this deck belongs here uh anything else did i miss anything i have vanquisher too uh uh, in, in no particular order, I'm too late to order this. In, in, in no particular, I was ordered from my favorite decks to my least favorite decks. So, uh, uh, uh something like this. In, in, in no in no particular order, these decks are all B tier. Sharheart does basically nothing. That can basically get off the list next month, for, for realistically speaking. Uh, it does glorious. That's all it really does. Uh, Fenrir, it has like the, it does cool high roll stuff, but uh, spoilers, if you only give them 2CB for their first try turn, they are not, they are probably not going to kill you, so. There's a little hint for this matchup, don't just, don't just deny them CB if they go for, if they go second. Deny them CB, and the deck still can run to see deck out issues if they don't see, uh, uh, if they don't see Dreaming Dragon, uh, uh, still somewhat peace reliant. The deck play, does not play heal guard, so the deck is just prone to dying. So, uh, all, all that, this deck, I don't think this deck belongs any higher than this. Uh, Thavas is just the worst of all the common decks at this point, but it can still randomly kill you, I guess, so. Tier, Starvader, oh, not there. Uh, Starvaders are very, eh, like, they're, like, okay sometimes, but, uh, like, you know, Starvaders are Starvaders. So, not not the best deck in what the meta is right now. Uh, Messiahs, just, again, just kind of whatever. They haven't gotten, basically haven't gotten any, anything new in like, since release, or since like, Zalix I guess, but yeah. Science kinda whatever, Vanquisher also kinda whatever, just a 3 spring deck. Uh, yeah, just, these decks are all just kinda mediocre, they, they can win here and there, but they're not anything amazing. Uh, 8 tier, I just, again, I just fill this up over the decks as I go along, uh, I think this deck belongs here. Uh, oh, not, not that high. Uh, honestly, I think Gold's belong here too. I, I like slightly order this, I guess. I think Luar's probably the best I got out of, out of this here. Uh, something, I think these two decks are interchangeable. I think both, these both these decks kind of suck right now, to be honest. It's not something like this for order for A. Uh, Night Rose, Hari, they just kind of do very similar. They, like, they go, they go brr, and then they, you know, it's kind of whatever. They're like combo decks. Uh, Night Rose kind of slow, but more explosive. Hari can, like, kill faster because they can actually do stuff on first ride. Uh, both decks kind of whatever right now. Uh, Gav is cool because it has rescue checks. I think like I personally prefer the crit build, but the stand build is pr like probably fine. Uh, but it's like this deck is cool just because it gets a bunch of bunch of checks, and a bunch of triggers, very fat numbers, uh, cool multi attacks. Uh, GB two pretty good defensively. I think this deck just has like pretty solid tools. Not amazing deck, not like garbage by any means either. It's, it's very whatever. It's it's there. It, it does its thing. Uh, Jet uh, is. This is, uh, uh, with the new set 10 stuff, so, it's like, all the ETB stuff. Uh, this deck, I think, is actually, like, pretty solid. But the only issue, I think this deck, like, has to go second. Like, going first, this deck just sits there eating shit a lot of the times. So, I mean, that's a lot of decks, but I think this deck specifically, like, they have to go second, because they, uh, because if they go first, uh, they're basically forced, because if they, if they go first and they just ate shit and went to five, they're basically forced to go into, um, they're basically forced to uh, get the grade one intercepts immediately, which you usually want to save for your second stride, because uh, on your first stride, realistically, you want to set Ugo Uro to actually push. But if you're forced to go into uh, the two grade one intercepts uh, on first stride, you're just kind of sitting there being boned. Uh, uh, so you might not be pushed on that turn. So for that uh, it's kind of it's like kind of very I think very dire roll dependent. Also really like mediocre early game because that doesn't really generate too much advantage. So uh, you don't want to be slaying cards out super early too. Uh, that being said, the intercepts are actually very good against, uh, against stuff like Altmile, for example, and like, uh, I guess Gurgit too, to some extent, like all the combo decks, because, uh, this deck, unlike, unlike stuff like, uh, Gurgit, like, they can actually get triple intercepts, or, in this case, like, up, up to, like, five intercepts on first stride, so that's really good, uh, they can tutor it out really easily, which is, um, a, a plus, it's something that, uh, Gurgit, I guess Gurgit doesn't need to, like, tutor, because he just gives the passive to the back row, but, um, uh, Jet... Being able to do it on first stride is both like a good thing and a bad thing. Sometimes you're forced into it, but being able to do it on first stride is definitely very nice. Can you slow down the uh, super aggressive deck? So, so that I think Jet with the DTP stuff is in a, in a pretty okay spot right now. So I think it belongs very solid up in like middle top of eight here. 
Uh, Prisms, I think, are the most overrated deck of ever. Uh, I think J I know JB players love this deck. I think they think this. I know it's right. They think this deck is S tier. I think this deck is overrated as hell. I don't think this deck is uh, particularly that good. And does like cool combos, draws a bunch, which is like cool and all. Can still play your doing your dupe stuff, but uh, overall, it's like I don't think this like does anything particularly special. It sets it like super apart from every other deck that makes that would put put up here. I don't think this deck does anything unfair at all whatsoever. Like your comp your kill tone is really cool, but uh, you know I think Jingle Theory is a little bit cooler. So I just with that. Oh yeah, this deck also struggles with this Jingle Theory. Yeah. Uh, they can deal with it, but if they're dealing with it, they're not doing their kill turn. Or if they're doing the kill turn, it is super scuffed. So just because of that, I don't think this deck is uh, particularly that good. Or as good as people say it is. Uh, Gurgut, I think Gurgut is fine too. I think the new toys they got from set uh, 8? Yeah, uh, wait. I might, get my, I might get my set numbers wrong. Uh, what, what, whatever set the Luar stuff is. I, don't, I actually do not remember set numbers anymore at this point. Uh, what the, the Luar set, uh, they got pretty cool stuff there. Uh, this, uh, they, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, the, the new Gersh is pretty good, the great, new grade 2 is pretty good, uh, let's deck push, uh, let, uh, the scaling is very nice in Jingle Theory, because it actually lets you, like, do multi-attacks against Jingle Theory numbers, which I think is pretty cool, uh, so, and, uh, and, uh, both the Gurgits have different GB2s that are very good defensively for different matchups, so I do think that having an option to choose which defensive right option you want is very, very good, so, I just got that puts an eight tier, but uh, I do think this deck does lack. I, I feel like the deck just runs out of steam a lot of the time. Like, like I I was I rated it really highly beforehand, but uh, after like playing with it and seeing other people play it, like I feel like the deck like really like runs out of steam or just comes close to way too close to deck out a lot of the time, for my liking. So I think just because of that, I've realized the deck does have a few like a few glaring issues. So I will like lower it down to eight tier, and uh, finally Luard. Uh, Obviously, the zero damage version of the deck died, so I don't even have that on the list anymore because that would be represented with Agma. But that's, that's the point. Uh, I think Ray Lord is still actually pretty solid deck. Uh, I think you could definitely argue Lord a bit low, a little bit lower. I think actually it probably does belong a little bit lower to be honest. So I guess I'll like move it down a little bit. All right, probably something like this. I, I think these three decks are pretty interchangeable to be honest. Uh, but I just will leave it up here for now. Uh, Luard, uh, I think Agma is still very powerful. Uh, 18k intercepts. Is still very powerful against all the combo decks because then you actually hit into it. Uh, but I think this deck's biggest weakness now are the retire matchups and obviously stuff like Nightwish which binds your drop zone. Uh, but I think retire matchups really hurt this deck because uh, the way this deck generates all its advantage is using Luard's uh, stride bonus and that card requires you to have a card on the board beforehand. So if they like kill all your back row, you won't have a card to sack off for cost. So uh, because of that, you uh, sometimes you just lose out on card advantage. Uh, obviously, if you sack it off yourself for uh, for your own skills, right? So they would get then retire. You again won't have anything on the boards, which kind of sucks. But uh, against, I think this deck against the non-retire matchups is actually still super, super powerful, just because of the fact that um, uh, you know, this deck has a bunch of like back row retire. Because I think Agma is still your your quote unquote win con because uh, blowing up the board, drawing with your cards, getting swing face three times is still pretty good. And then 18k intercepts is also very good after nuking all their back row, so it makes them struggle to hit into the 18k intercepts. So, and uh, since zero damage lure isn't prevalent or at all anymore, people aren't taking peekers against this deck. Uh, to keep their boosters, and because of that, I think uh, Luar is still a very solid deck just because of what it does. Uh, you can play crits, the bullet, the grade zero crit is still very powerful. Uh, Agma is still a very powerful card. Uh, the yeah, the grade three Luar is still very amazing because it's a, basically a plus two every turn. Because uh, trade one on board for two cards, free stride draws you one. So uh, just because that, uh, just because of how like cohesive and solid the deck is all together, I think Luar still is a very very solid A tier deck. But uh. Without its like zero damage uh, gimmicks anymore, I definitely think this deck has been de demoted to a tier as opposed to last month, where uh, the deck was running around rampant, being like the, the boogeyman of the month. So uh, definitely a very solid tier deck. Again, like, again, I think uh, Prisms, Gold, and Lure are all very interchangeable, and I think all of all three of these also have a argument to to go into S tier. I personally just don't think they belong in S tier, and I think they are very much like the top contenders of a tier here. Uh, uh, above these decks by I think a very uh, 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 rather significant or noticeable margin above these other A tier decks that you could probably put like a tier in between S and A just for these three decks so yeah uh, but yeah these three decks all very powerful and finally S tier uh, to nobody's surprise Asha, Alt Mile, Blade Master these decks ever since they came out they've been terrorizing the game uh, Blade Master a little less though Blade, Blade, Blade Master is just a really solid deck over, all around but uh, Asha, Alt Mile uh, both have been terrorizing the game uh, with I again I think this is set ten with set ten, um, 
they just got even more toys. The Bloom, I don't have uh, se some separately, but uh, I think the Bloom and the Brave builds do basically the same thing as the original build. So uh, just because of that, I'm not going to separate them. Uh, but I think these two decks, uh, uh, the Bloom and Brave decks are both like uh, solid enough. Now before they are like significantly weaker than the older versions of the deck, uh, or of the like the 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 quote unquote good stuck version of the deck that uh there wasn't a need to separate to uh to uh play those but now i think both bloom and brave are like are closer to side grades of these decks like i personally myself have been playing more like bloom than the original which is because i find it more fun to play uh so uh i think just because of that i think both uh, so they like both these decks have like two builds now and they're both fairly competent in their own right so i think at this point just comes to come on the preference I do think that the blue and rebuilds are probably still slightly worse than the regu regular versions of the of the Asha and Altma, but uh, the, I, again, you can I think they're not worse enough to the point where you feel super bad playing Bloom and Brave as opposed to the old version of Dexia. Uh, it's very solid, and then Blade Master uh, because Luard is no longer the boogeyman of zero damage. Uh, this deck is still running around just killing everything. Uh, you can play the Pichan, the Rain Elemental, the one that gets your resist. To deal with this deck. Uh, Alt Mile has always just been like a die roll of can you heal enough, draw enough cards to survive their stuff. So I think Alt Mile, uh, I think no, I think Blade Master is still very, I, I think it's still very very good. They got like no new cards, but surprise, what what Titan does, what Novell does, just very very solid. Uh, I think that's pretty funny now because I think Blade Master like dicks on dicks on Luard now. So yeah, that's pretty funny how the tables have turned in this matchup. So uh, yeah. I think with with uh, Luard, Zero Damage Luard guarding the Alt Ma uh, Blade Master is back at the top again, top three decks. So yeah, so uh, honestly, it was, on it was literally just Luard that changed the the meta. If, if Zero Damage Luard wasn't around last month, the meta would have literally stayed the same for another month. And what a surprise! They 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 dicked on Luard back to what it was before. So yeah, uh, that's so that's it for this month's tier list. I know quite short as for as usual, but there really wasn't anything to say about this to be honest. This month, it's the the stuff is basically the same. So yeah. Uh, well, that's it for this month's tier list. Uh, like and subscribe, look at this stuff. So I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.